Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of RimWorld. It's been a little bit since we've started this on just the Yub Tubs. Of course, we still have a Let's Play series on uh, our live stream series going on on Twitch, but uh, I kind of wanted some more RimWorld. I want to do something different. The wonderful thing about RimWorld, um, you know, a lot of people always ask, like, what's better, Dwarf Fortress or RimWorld? And sort of from like a standalone single session point of view, Dwarf Fortress just it's got so much more going on. But the difference is with RimWorld is there's so much more variation in replayability, I feel. And so I feel like if I could only play one game for the rest of my life, I would probably pick RimWorld over Dwarf Fortress simply because with the ideology expansion in particular, there's a lot of kind of different themes that you can go through things. So kind of been itching to play a little bit more RimWorld. So we're going to be starting a new one today. I'm going to do a quick pass through of the mods over here. There should be a link down in the doobly doo with a new collection of mods for this one. It's going to be fairly similar to what we've been running uh, recently, except recently was sort of strictly vanilla. Only things that change the user interface. Here we're going to go kind of vanilla plus where we've got a couple of things that slightly modify gameplay, but not any kind of major way it's still gonna be pretty close to vanilla <clears throat> um so i'm not gonna necessarily like talk about what each one of these are uh again most of these at the top here these are gonna be the same from before I'm basically just user interface quality of life tiny little things um the things that actually modify the gameplay a little bit we do have the colony manager which will just give us the ability to automate you know start cutting some trees if we have less than you know a hundred wood chop down some trees uh if we have less than so much uh food then flag some enemies to be hunted just saves us a few clicks that sort of thing uh, i do really really love simple sidearms this is the one thing that like um more significantly I, I would say changes gameplay the idea that pawns can have both a say a range weapon and a melee weapon or i mean i suppose they could pack a couple of different range weapons but generally speaking i use this for a range plus a melee it just feels really good um it doesn't radically transform the game but it's definitely a change and then when i play simple sidearms i like to have equipment manager which means that our pawns will automatically pick up weapons uh so we don't have to keep going and telling them to grab a gun go ahead and grab a knife kind of thing they'll they'll do that on our own which to me feels really really good fluffy breakdown also changed the gameplay a little bit instead of a random breakdown of mechanical devices which have you have to replace it with a new component instead uh, equipment needs to be maintained from time to time to prevent the breakdown so this eats more pawn time but saves you the trouble of constantly having to replenish the other components which i mean i guess it, it does i'm sure make the game a little bit easier but it just feels so much better that way um and then yeah a handful of other things down here that i wasn't running before including wall lights because you know it's not strictly vanilla but now we're back in here and that feels good so again you can check the full list in the doobly doo uh you could subscribe to all the mods that way as well so i have gone and just pre-generated a colony for us so i'm going to load that up and we'll take a look at what we've got where we are in the world who we are and what we believe in so we are actually going to do kind of a tropical start over here on a river. Let's open up the world map and see exactly where we are. So we are pretty close to Lake Cabium and Lake Anya in probably what is still part of the Combia rainforest on the eastern part of this continent. This is a 30% world generation. Um, I think the... Uh, the seed I used was actually cat, which was in there by default. And what I wanted is, as in most of my starts, I often like to start relatively close to some of the factions because it gives us the option of sending a trade caravan there. Not that I do that many trade caravans, although we might do it a little bit more today. Um, one of the things I also wanted to do is I wanted to make sure I was relatively close to one of the Imperial spots because the thing with this run is we are going to go and do something I've, I haven't actually done before in this game, which is go for the royalty victory condition. We got pretty damn close on the essential cat cafe run i think we did get essentia to the correct royal title or very close um there uh but um 1.4 had just come out or yeah actually i think had come out at that point but i was still forcing the game onto 1.3 build so really we wanted to wrap up that let's play so that we could switch over 1.4 so i've never actually done the victory via the royalty thing um i have done the victory very sp spaceship thing although some people have said it's possible we never actually launched a spaceship on a let's play before which i hadn't realized that maybe that's something that we'll go ahead and have to resolve at some point i thought we had certainly I have in my personal games um but i i have not personally or on live stream done the royalty victory conditions we're gonna do that there's also the uh, the sort of arco nexus victory condition that we have n haven't done although by all sounds of it it's not terribly exciting so we are going to be going and trying to do the royalty vibe the other thing is we are playing on brutal difficulty uh that would be under gameplay over here 
storyteller settings. So we are playing Cassandra Classic on Losing is Fun. Cassandra Classic is much harder than um, than Randy. Randy sometimes will just like send you, you know, a bunch of random stuff simultaneously that does kill you, but it is very random and actually not that likely to happen necessarily. Whereas Cassandra Classic is actively trying to murder you. Um, she will send a major threat, usually is a raid, every, uh, what's her cooldown period? Is it eight days? And then there's things, there's an on period of like four or six days or something like that. And it can include two back to back raids, which I think, uh, maybe a 48 hour gap in between. And those are things that are absolutely brutal. Um, so we are gonna have to do some amount of wealth management, at, at least early on, uh, which is gonna go maybe a little contrary to us feeling like we're ranking up and becoming royal, but it is gonna be really important to manage our wealth level so that we don't get absolutely obliterated by Cassandra over here. Especially since despite the fact that we have it add, we have added in some mods, we haven't really done anything that will make the game easier. Even simple sidearms, because the enemies will show up with sidearms as well. So that's kind of goes both ways. Um, and the uh, the colony management, we have to build an extra colony, colony management bench, which technically adds a little bit more wealth there as well. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I did go and pick a start by the river because it looks quite nice. And then we can make use of hydropower, although it's a very thin river. I don't know if that's going to make it awkward to place anything at any point. We shall see. We got some debris on the map. I am running the Queeks Galore map so I can deconstruct things instead of having to like manually go and punch things and just getting incredibly frustrated. I don't know why there's in the game with some of this debris they added, you have to manually attack these. It's so just dull. No one wants that. So we're about to land over here. I did do a little bit of surveying of the site. If we go and flip open uh, fertility overlay, we've got some nice rich soil over here. One of the nice things about a jungle start or rainforest start is you do tend to get a lot of good fertile soil. On the downside, we do have increased disease uh, generation, which is not ideal. We're also gonna have a fair amount of uh, wildlife, most likely. So what I kind of am thinking is we'll probably build somewhere over here to get started um, so that we can not be not too far from the farming, not too far from the river. In fact, we might want to lean, 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 sure, a little bit towards the farming site early on, um, just because that's where we're going to have more back and forth kind of thing. I don't want to be too close to the edge. But this, I would say, is not too close to the edge. And if we turn this off, okay, that's just infertile. It's not a mountain or anything. This actually might be a great place to start, although if we take a look at terrain affordance so building on the the yeller bits over here is fairly tricksy um because uh, i don't think we'll be able to build walls on some of these i'm not entirely sure the class the weight class of different materials and things like that and and whatnot but probably maybe set something up like this we'll probably base this base uh -huh, on a standard sort of 13 by 13 grid um 13 by 13 is the or 13 wide anyway is the maximum width you can do a room without having to get an extra ceiling support um so it doesn't have to be like we don't have to build 13 by 13 rooms we could do 13 by very long of course um but being on that kind of grid is a pretty good baseline to start things off in um but i think with this since we're going with the royalty thing, I think the vibe we're going to go with the construction, just to be a little on theme. Obviously, we're have to, going to have to be a little try hard because of the difficulty setting, but I would still like to have kind of a thematic idea with our construction. I think I would like our base to look like one giant building, very palatial, right, with hallways as opposed to separated out buildings or something. Um, early on, we probably will have to have rooms that are sort of squished together and leading into each other. But at some point, I might want hallways because it'll look kind of nice. But that that might be a later in the game kind of thing, because, yeah, we have to take the uh, the threat here a little bit on the serious side so let's assume we're gonna start constructing with wood because of course we're gonna have plentiful of that let's even before we unpause here let's make a kind of a plan for uh, a room kind of over here maybe a little further from this yellow part something like this and 13 by 13 you can also go 25 wide that's the width of two 13 by 13 uh, rooms that share an inner wall and do something like that so we'll plan some sort of big long house to get started and a door, a door just on each end, I think is entirely reasonable. Um, and actually, even before I unpause, let me go and put down a little bit of farming over here. We'll get our rice crops happening. Um, I think at the start, you're looking for about 10 tiles per colonist, so 30 tiles. We could go a little bit more, so this would be 40, which gives us a bit of an extra buffer. I like a sort of eight by five, maybe. Um, and then let me go and get a four by five zone. Oh, shoot. I thought I had deselected. 
to start a new zone. I do, I do get kind of frustrated by that still. And man, the green on green is not easy to see. But yeah, pop out of it completely. Another growing zone right over here. So this big one, we're going to go and make rice. Rice and corn is a very uh, benefits greatly from fertility. Potatoes don't really care. If we're growing rich soil, we really want corn or rice. Technically, corn is sort of the most labor efficient because you plant it once. It takes a long time to grow, but then you get lots of food, whereas rice is a quick cycle. So you have to replant it quite a bit more often. So it takes more labor. The advantage of rice is um, because it cycles so much faster, you get a consistent supply of food in. Also, if you are were to get a random event that could kill plants like a cold snap, like toxic fallout, anything like that, then um, um, you're less likely to lose your entire harvest from the rice. So rice is more consistent and it's going to be good. We're also going to go over here. We're going to plant our heel root, which we don't have the growing skill right now, but that's OK. And I'm going to start with a little bit of cotton as well. We might decide to do cycloid uh, tea and stuff at some point, but I don't think we're going to start with that. In fact, I'm not even convinced we need to plant these immediately. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to disallow sowing on both of those so that we don't waste any time planting those right away. But we definitely want the rice ASAP, so that's going to be in there. That's been designated over here, which is great. I will go and make a stockpile zone just generically on the floor inside of this thing. Uh, expand like so. Deconstruct on that thing, then we'll fill it in afterwards. Um, this can basically allow everything that a normal stockpile zone allows. I will put a low priority, so if we have specialized stockpiles, we're going to be good to go. And I guess since I'm not really planning on building this area, this would be a great place maybe to put our dumping stockpile zone. We'll do something like that. And I'm going to add in. So this is normal priority. I'm going to go under. There we go. Raw resources. Uh, I'm going to turn this all on except for plant matter because it can be stored outside. I might go and let the silver get stored indoors as well. Um, wood does decay outside, but not very quickly. So I think it can be stored outside just fine. So it's normal priority. So it's going to be higher priority than the stuff inside the house. So that's going to be OK. So I don't have to like disallow steel from in here or anything like that. Okay, growth zone, a little bit of that. Obviously, we're going to need some wood for construction. I'm going to put a chopped wood kind of in a radius around our house because we're going to need certainly the indoor cleared as well. It's going to be more wood than we need right now, but I think we're going to use that pretty quickly, so that's going to be fine. Okay, let's assign some labors. And then we'll get it started. So here's the interesting thing. I actually did not I was all prepared to like re-roll these people a whole bunch and get the absolute perfect stats, but I actually went with literally the three people generated immediately as is. They're not perfectly optimized, but they are pretty damn good as a start. The fact that I literally didn't re-roll them at all is miraculous. Um, so we've got Hannah over here. So she's a misandrist, which is not ideal, um, but Beautiful is really useful for social interactions. It might cause a bit of a problem if Roman keeps flirting with Hannah and she's going to hate that. We might get some social fights. It's not going to be ideal, but beautiful, psychically dull. I mean, it obviously sucks if we want you to be a leader, for example, or do any psychic powers, but otherwise just being less sensitive to um, psychic drone is actually fairly handy. She is stupendously good at medical, pretty good at social as well. Again, the misandrist may be a little awkward, but other than that, she should be pretty good at recruiting prisoners, for example. Unfortunately, no shooting skill, no shooting passion, although a little bit in melee is nice. Um, and that's it. So early on, Hannah, I think, is mostly going to do a lot of hauling. We'll probably end up putting on maybe some early construction duties to help get the walls up or something like that. Uh, and I think no health problems. Yeah, other than crypto sleep sickness. Go over to Nora over here. Same thing. No health problems currently. Check her bio. She rolled the fast walker, which is amazing. I mean, I think, is it jogger that's even faster? But that's, I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, I think the top, top, top tier is probably like tough, super immune, industrious, but things like jogger and fast walker are definitely way up there. Just generically always good, always handy to have. Again, no shooting passion, no particular shooting skill, which is unfortunate. Again, we got two people with level four melee and one tick of passion, which is interesting. 11 construction skill. Why am I getting a text message from? Okay, that's fine. Um, 11 construction skill, which is amazing. Double passion for it. Just wonderful. The only downside here is Nora's also our planting expert, and there's going to be a little overlap over there, but uh, we'll see. Nothing else going on, but that's all right. And then we go to Roman, who's a careful shooter. Again, no shooting skill, no shooting passion. That is going to be really awkward early on. Um, but again, I didn't realize that they all have a bit of melee passion. Uh, so maybe we'll make extra use of melee. At least early on, the raids we're going to get are fairly easy and mailing to defend might be the ideal super passion for mining 
as well as crafting, which is great, and a little smattering of cooking. And again, the fact that we didn't, I didn't reroll these people. I, we got really lucky with these. Roman does have a torso scar, which is a bit unfortunate. It's bringing down his torso efficiency, which doesn't seem to affect any of his stats. Um, it doesn't also appear to be painful, which is interesting. So I guess maybe we did get lucky with that injury, as it turns out. Okay, so back to the work management thing over here. Um, let's go and kill this. Child care, basic. I mean, it's mostly just flicking switches, so that can be maxed out. And we want you warding we've got there. Let's not worry about handling for now. Um, for, for actual jobs, let's say I turn all these people off. Since no one's particularly good at shooting, we probably won't end up doing any hunting at all. Um, we also don't have any particularly good man or researchers, unfortunately, but we'll see what we can do. So obviously, Roman's going to have to do the cooking if we're doing cooking early on. Now, we're not transhumanists, so if we do have nutrient paste, our people are going to be cranky about it, but maybe they can put up with it. Or maybe we just get Roman cooking early. Um, it's a big time sink, but it's not the worst thing in the universe. At least we could do it without power. If we don't go with nutrient paste, we could delay getting power for a little bit. Um, so we'll see. We'll leave hunting off for now, that's gonna be okay. Uh, Nora obviously is a fantastic constructor, but yeah, the fact that she's also a grower is a little awkward, but I guess it's not gonna take that long to plant that and then she can go and do construction. Um, if we just look at Han over here, again, she's got no passion or anything. Now crafting, basically everything you do with the crafting skill mostly doesn't care about your skill. Um, smithing, tailoring, yes, absolutely, skill's critical. For crafting, uh, crafting mostly covers, for us, early on, it's going to be block cutting, which in default, RimWorld doesn't use your crafting skill, doesn't give you crafting XP, doesn't give a crap. So, um, while Roman is obviously going to be our smith and our tailor, I think having Hannah be our crafter is going to be pretty ideal here. So we don't need art, or leave research off for a little bit until we get it sorted. Uh, if we do mining, obviously Roman's got to do that. So everyone's going to be going to have a little something something. Hannah's mostly going to be doing hauling and cleaning until we get some block cutting set up, which I think we'd have to research first anyway. I am thinking with Hannah, I think I will turn on construction. I mean, she's got a four, she's going to be able to put up walls, occasionally botch some things, but it should be helpful. In fact, with Nora here, I'm going to bring the construction down to a three because I want to make sure to get the plants in the ground first. So we'll do that. It won't take her very long, and then she's going to get over to constructing. I think that's going to be a perfectly fine and reasonable start. And with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and unpause. We'll go ahead and unforbid everything that's on the map. Wow, everything. Good stuff. Um, Before we go any further, since we are using uh, the equipment manager over here, I'm going to make sure that our... There we go. Okay, that had already been saved. I, there, I, there are a couple of things I had set up before the uh, the save. I like to turn off. So Equipment Manager just makes it so the pawns try to equip the best weapons automatically without having you can constantly right click them. Mostly, I don't mind equipping a weapon for them the first time around. It's once they get downed and they drop their weapons, re-equipping is annoying. Simple Sidearm does have a feature for maybe re-equipping them. Uh, there's another mod called, it's like, dude, where's my gun or something like that. That sort of does it, but I was never kind of happy with those things. Um, so instead of having a mod that causes people to attempt to re-equip what they had, instead, Equipment Loadout has it so that um, every day, actually, I think by default, it's every six hours or something like that. They check to see if they can be equipping a better weapon based on their filter. But I, I like to turn off the support and sniper loadout so that the the automatic assignment will always take assault, which is going to be OK. Um, I tend to just have a single primary weapon with highest DPS set up over there and then the highest DPS melee sidearm they can get. And at some point, usually I go and get them to equip an EMP grenade as well, which we don't have currently. Um, so let's not worry about that right now. Um, if you do have mods that add a bunch of like work tools, like um, pickaxes, crafting hammers, uh, uh, butchers, cleavers, and things like that, like some of the uh, vanilla um, apparel mods and things add a lot of like handheld equipment for jobs. This will also take care of equipping those things, but I don't have any of those running and I don't think there's anything like that in vanilla. So, all right, we did start with a cat. Yankee over here. Um, we do have in our ideology, which we'll talk about in just a scooch, a human supremacy. So we don't have any bonding. So we don't really need this cat. And I don't think the cat's going to do anything for us. So uh, I suspect the plan is going to be to slaughter that for meat fairly soon. Let's talk about our ideology. So mostly I didn't make any changes to what was generated here. I selected a human primacy uh, because it does unlock the production specialist, which is really, really, really powerful. Um, and also supremacist over here, because one of the things I'm planning to do is selling prisoners and slaves 
to the empire when they come by. So supremacist doesn't actually care about slavery by default. It also gives us access to the shooting and melee specialist roles uh, that we may make use of a little bit later. Um, I did set the research so very fast for now. Honestly, I'm tempted to go into dev mode and and maybe get rid of that. I mean, it's it's perfectly fine and perfectly vanilla. A little bit strong. I think we're gonna have enough challenges. You know what? On max difficulty, losing is fun here. Well, technically, okay. I'm not playing on literal max difficulty. You can technically make the game even harder if you go custom difficulty. You can increase the threat scale to like 500%. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with the normal losing is fun. I think that's gonna be plenty hard for us, but we will see. All right, a little bit of construction going on. Uh, what I'll probably do is these rocks over here. Where's my uh, whole things? ask for these rocks to be hauled out of our building please Roman's already moving a few things I think because they were under the construction area so getting moved to the dumping zone Nora's getting that planting done which is going to be great we might have to put a little fence around here to make sure no critters eat our plants luckily it is a rich enough biome in general that our animals should be pretty content and fed most of the time no wait Nora and Roman are in a relationship already oh my god I didn't realize that Huh. Well, good and bad. Um, they want to sleep together. Now, they're not going to have a private room. Now, we can satisfy. We can get rid of the pawns want to sleep together debuff simply by having them be in beds in the same barracks. That will satisfy them um, and get rid of that. It won't give them the positive of, like, getting some lovin'. I don't know if the people can get lovin' in a, um, in a shared room. I guess we might find out. It's going to be real awkward because I'm literally going to put the single bed right next door to that. Let's see what happens with uh, with all that. I kind of don't want Hannah working on these. I wonder, should I be running the quality builder mod? Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, ideally, I would want... Um, is it Roman? Roman's our constructor. No. Nora's our constructor, isn't it? Yeah, Nora's our planter and constructor. Um, I can't set a minimum skill. I'm happy with Hannah continue to help with the walls. Maybe when the planting is done, I'll turn construction off on Hannah. So that she doesn't get involved. I'll just get Nora to finish the planting first. I suppose I could put plant cutting on you. But yeah, Hannah's got really nothing going on other than uh other than hauling is really it. Now, ideology. Okay, so we talked about those two. We've got the research very fast. Um by default with supremacy, I think they like they they want executions. I just changed it to respect it as guilty, so we don't we won't get a debuff if we haven't executed anyone recently. Um we're not gonna do cannibalism. Uh, and yeah, because we are um, human primacy, no bonding allowed, we do find carcass ugly, fungus is bites. I mean, it's going to be mostly vanilla, right? No insect meat, no nutrient paste. I mean, we can, but it'll make them ha unhappy. They do want skull spikes. Looks like we don't get a debuff from not having them, though, so that's okay. Slavery acceptable. Um, organ use, I did switch to acceptable. We may decide to harvest organs for some extra cash. We'll see. And then our roles. So we've got our leader here, which is called the Divine Human. I didn't change these names. The moral guide is our priest of life. Our, we, we have production specialist role is available as an option, uh, which will probably... Well, yeah, I don't know, actually. Ideally, be someone with both construction and crafting passion. I think Roman's probably the best bet for that. I don't know if it turns off cooking. If it does, that might be awkward. Might turn off mining as well. I don't think we're going to rush for that specialist role, but it is a really, really powerful one because they make things that are higher quality. Um, you can have a total of two specialists. We can't have both a shooting and a melee and a production. So I've got shooting specialist in here, but right now we don't have anyone particularly ideal for this. Um, well, hold on. Shooting specialist doesn't disable, so cook, construct, grow, mine, plant, cut, smith, tailor, craft. It doesn't actually turn off hauling. Even though Hannah doesn't have um, shooting passion, the shooting specialist might not be a bad pick for her. We can always change it as the role goes. Um, rituals, I just added four generic social festivals that have a chance of inviting people. If we want some more colonists, we can go and spam that, uh, but not too worried about it. And uh, our relics... So cup, some sort of cube thing, pulse rifle, and that's it. No preferred xenotypes. We're all baseliners, by the way, in here. Decided to leave sort of things as a blank slate. We'll see how it goes. You know, sort of vanilla experience, but that's okay. All right, planting's almost done. I can probably bring up the speed here. I wonder, does Hannah even have the skill to work on these beds? Technically she does, okay. But yeah, I'd rather she doesn't. 
very happy with her just building the walls. In fact, maybe I'll just forbid this just to make sure she doesn't get started on anything over there. Nora's taking a bit of a breather. That's okay. I guess what I could do fairly early on too is uh, set up a wooden horseshoe pin indoors. Sure. Often I set it up outside, but there's no reason to. We can leave it indoors. That's fine. I'm not going to set up any production buildings or anything like that. Um, we're not going to have a bed on day one, which is fine. I mean, either like they're going to sleep outside with no bed day one. I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, Nora's going to go and cut down these trees because cutting is a pretty high priority for her. While Hannah keeps working on the walls and Roman kind of does nothing but a little bit of hauling. But that's not that's not a problem. I don't mind that. Nora picked up the body armor and she does have the hunting rifle, the survival rifle or bolt action rifle, right? Keep forgetting. They used to be called the survival rifle, right? I'm not crazy. I'm pretty sure that's what the, the, it was. And what am I going to do here? There we go. I'm going to take down. I'm going to disable Hannah's construction. She can help out with the plant cutting as well. There we go. And I'll re-enable uh, the higher priority construction for Nora. And then tomorrow we will be enclosed, sleeping in beds. We'll be much, much happier at that point. And then maybe a, an early table and chairs. Not that you tend to have to worry about mental breaks early on, because you do start with initial optimism. And in addition to that, we have very low expectations because our colony wealth is so very low currently. We are going to need uh, some food soon. We can probably just pick a few berries to start off with because we don't actually have to butcher that, which is nice. We could even eat it raw if need be. I'll put a little bit of harvesting of the raw berries. I guess I can turn off the terrain affordance. That's going to be OK. Oh, I think Nora just put on flak pants. She took off her normal pants. That's OK. No problem with that. I guess maybe our wall is just a higher priority in terms of construction. I don't know if it specifies that here. Build roof, remove roof is super high. Construct placed frames. I don't see. Maybe there's some subdivisions within them. I don't know. All right. Roof coming up. Beds are in place. Normal. Really? We just got normal quality on both? With your 11 construction skill? I'm actually kind of embarrassed for you there, Nora. Okay. I'm assuming. Yeah, we don't have geo or um, hydroelectric power. How quickly can we get that? Water mill generator. We can research that immediately. Yeah, that sounds like what we want to do here. Okay, for production, let's get... Um, I guess the other advantage of an early nutrient paste dispenser is that we also won't get food poisoning. Maybe I should set up a little solar power to be able to get that happening. trying to avoid it but we need some cooking I mean we could just keep eating raw berries but there's a 2% chance of getting sick oh what do I want to do I guess if you know I always say if, if you're having a hard time deciding between a couple of different options and is that difficult they're probably not that far out of whack of one another we do still have some survival meals for now how quickly do I want to fence off this area you know what I don't want to do it pretty quickly. I'm a little bit worried about critters getting in here. Uh, 12 will cover all that. Yeah. We'll have to move the fence after. Let me just do that to make sure that nothing's eating our rice and screwing that up. I really don't want to go nutrient paste dispenser. Even though I think it's probably the smarter option right now. I think it might be, but I want to go. I just want to do some cooking. I just I like cooking so much. It might be unoptimal, but I enjoy it so much. So that's, I think, what was going to happen. So we'll get ready for some cooking. Um, I'll put a butchering table outside. Yeah, yeah, it'll be outdoors. It'll be slower. I don't really care. At least then the blood and the guts don't happen in the same area as the kitchen. Um, 
Let, we'll want an early stone cutter table as well, so we can start doing crafting for that, replace some of the material. Although we do have infinite wood, we don't generally have to worry about fire too early, but it's going to be okay. So butcher stove, uh, we can make do without the tailoring bench. We'll get those up, and I think we're going to get ready to be in a situation where we have like kind of everyone researching kind of as quickly as possible. We'll get those down. I mean, in a sense, I'm I'm over placing things, but I think it's okay. Let me put a little uh, placeholder bed here just to get our positioning okay. Oh, I know what I want to do. I want to set up a wooden chest table here. And then a one by two table here. And we'll go with wooden dining chairs like that. I'll leave the others empty here because we don't need that many seats for the dining table. Um, I mean, I could put these two down and then just bid just so that we know we've got the place set up the advantage of the beds here is i can put a um uh an end table right here and it'll it'll touch the it'll touch all the beds so we should all get the benefit of the end table once we get that built now obviously they're gonna get a debuff from the barracks but it'll be a large room and we can add some decoration in here actually we could do the trick where we plant a bunch of daily lilies in here to add a bunch of artificial beauty um and that's not a bad call. I guess I'll put that there. And somewhere over here. And then you just get one big, beautiful room that gives people huge buffs. I really like flooring early, even though it's bad for the wealth thing and, and all kinds of stuff. It's actually way more optimal for a long time to just plant some daily leaves. It's not a bad way to train your growing as, as well. And it gives people great moods. Nora, before you finish that, I'm going to get you to work on these uh, torches so you can see what you're doing. Interesting order of actions. There we go. All right. So that'll be fueled up. Uh, I'm going to set up a job over here. Cook simple meals time four. And that. Just keep a stack of ten around. There you go. Good. Ones want to sleep together. Yeah, but, oh, Roman took the wrong bed. Listen, Roman. Sign here. Yeah. And then a sign with Nora. There we are. Get rid of that penalty. It'll be interesting if you do loving, even though there's, you know, it's not a private room. Not sure you should do loving. I don't know, maybe Hannah doesn't care. Maybe I should have changed the uh, the marriage limitations. We could have got a big, like, uh, a big poly community. Big throuple. You know, we've never done that. Should I just do that right now? You know what? That would, that would change the dynamics of the colony compared to everything else. I'm not convinced this is going to be better in any way. In fact, I suspect this might be worse. <laughs> Because then when one person dies, it's going to make so many people so much more upset. But let's see what happens. There you go. Men and women, you can each have unlimited spouses. We can end up with the entire colony in one giant... Oh, you are loving. Hannah, do you have negative moodlets for people loving in your room? I mean, maybe it's giving you disturbed sleep. I might be pretty disturbed. But let's see what happens. Okay. Oh, turn off dev mode, please. There we go. So yeah, we're not we're not using a fluid ideology, but I don't mind doing a few a few tweaks for for awesome storiness right now. We'll see how that works out. I could put down a little crafting spot. I don't think we need a crafting spot early on. Although I could use it to make a bunch of clubs. You know, clubbing unst, 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 because we do have simple sidearms, and everyone apparently has got some passion for melee. But I'll probably just hold off for now. I don't know, man. Actually, I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Crafting spot. Right over there. And let's ask for clubs. Um, yeah, we'll make them out of stone blocks. We need to, some stone blocks to be made first. We'll, we'll put in a job to make three. I guess we did spawn in with the knife, but I'll make three clubs anyway. Well, okay. Never mind. I'll make two. I'm like, hold on. Quill wealth management. Do the bare minimum. Who's got the knife? Yeah, Nora, Nora seems to be really eager to grab stuff. She grabbed all the armor, and she grabbed the knife, and she grabbed the best weapon. All right, chest table set up. So we've got a few options for for recreation because this is set up as well. Uh, let's set up a job over here. If I go any stone block, they will grab whatever's closest, which is fine. Sometimes I like to standardize on one just to make sure we've got lots of a particular material. We've got a bunch of granite on the map. 
Yeah, I might want to do that. I mean, granite is the toughest material. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go granite, then any. Um, do until X. I think they stack up to 75. I mean, we don't want a bunch of blocks sitting around adding wealth and also maybe consuming more time. Um, sometimes I might be tempted to go 150. I suppose to start off with, I'll put a limit of 75. And yeah, for any stone blocks, same thing. So what should happen here is they're going to try to make up to 75 granite blocks. And if they run out of granite, they'll make some generic stone blocks until we've got 75 total blocks. So we might end up with like 70 granite blocks and five sandstone or, or whatever. And then it's going to be okay. Yeah, there we go. Hannah's going to go to work on that. You get some chairs here for comfort in a bit. Let's go ahead and unforbid the research tables. At some point, we will start to get some idleness. I'm not going to worry about building defenses. We can just use the rocks for cover early on. That's going to have to be okay. Simple meals being eaten. Great. We don't want to make too many simple meals because they'll also... We don't have refrigeration right now. So eventually they'll decay. One of the nice things is I've, I've been amazed at how much you can just ignore refrigeration, especially if you go with the nutrient based dispenser. You can kind of just ignore refrigeration because with rice, rice lasts for something like 60 days before it uh, rots without refrigeration. That's a long time. So the meals themselves don't last too long, uh, but the nutrient paste dispenser, you don't need to make meals, so you don't need refrigeration. And as long as you keep your amount of cooked meals pretty low, they tend to cycle pretty quickly. So we can actually make do without refrigeration for a good long time. Hell, I might want to set this to like an even lower amount, like like three. So there's literally just a meal for everyone. I mean, obviously it does it in terms of fours. So this, if we have two meals, it'll make four, we'll have six, but that's okay. Let me, let me do something like that. We got our first visitor, a cave child. I think it's a little early to be arresting anyone. Volatile underground is not really going to work out for us either. No, we'll just we'll just ignore you. It's fine. Yeah, you guys are hauling steel right from the unforbid job. And is making those blocks. Be able to replace some walls and stuff. Oh, uh, Nora, could you? Oh, you're missing some wood. Really? All right, let's chop down some more trees. Uh, hold on. I forgot, I have allow all, so I can say... Uh, where's the harvest fully grown? Right here. And if I hold control, then it'll only do trees. That did not. Harvest fully grown. Hold control to only include trees that are fully grown. Oh, that's gonna do the stumps. Hang on, cancel. Huh. I mean, we can clear the stumps. Do you get some wood from doing that? I you probably do, huh? Probably not very much. I guess we may as well get rid of the stumps that are in here. There you go. A uh, group of travelers. Oh, that may have been the one we already had. Yeah, we're gonna need... Oh, I canceled the, um, the research benches. Okay, so we might need even more wood. We can now, we'll be able to set up our um, research table, or sorry, management table to automatically queue trees to be chopped at some point, but I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. What do you think? Do we do, do we do the daily thing? It's probably a good idea. How, what's our mood? Yeah, awful barracks, unsightly environment. Now, flooring would help. Not having a stockpile in this room would also help. We'll move the stockpile soon-ish. Now, let's go ahead and do the plant trick. So we're going to make a growing zone. Do that. It's going to... Interesting. Because of the stockpile? It is. Okay, let's make a new stockpile zone here. And another one over here. And those default settings... Oh, no, I wanted to set these to low. And low. We'll do some shelving at some point, too. It adds wealth, but it looks so nice. But there you go. We'll ask for some things to be planted in here. Which... Yeah, Nora will construct first. Which is probably fine. And then when she's done with that, she'll do a little bit of growing. We're going to have to be very careful not to overschedule the construction so that Nora can handle the plant stuff. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put grow in a number one priority. Which, really, we don't really need it for the, um, the day lilies. Although it will be good training, because right now... Sorry, that's the wrong person. 
Yeah, she needs eight to be able to plant the um uh the heel root. I suppose I can unforbid these so she can plant the cotton. And start to accumulate that so we be ready for some crafting. Now her um her construction is above her plant cutting, but because there's not enough wood to construct oh that's Hannah anyway, I'm getting confused between the two. But I was it was still gonna be applying if she will um she will cut down trees if there's no wood to do the construction. But yeah, right now she'll do a little bit of planting. Which is fine. So that'll add beauty. It's going to train up her plant skill. That's going to be a-okay. Suspension, low medicine. Yeah, um, we might be able to pick some... Those are berries. Is Quill going to be able to see heal root? These are still berries. I mean, surely there must be heal root on the map. Hey, bueno. What is... Not that, that ever happens. Oh, could we get a high priority haul on these survival meals, please? Did I just forget what heal root looks like? I mean, that's probably the most likely. I need a I need a colorblind mod like this, but for heal root. I see daylilies. Maybe we just don't get wild heal root on this map. No, I find it much more likely that I just am not seeing it. That that's the most reasonable answer. Oh, well, luckily we'll be able to, um, those berries again, we'll be able to plant our own very soon. Nora's going to hit uh, skill eight really fast. Where are you right now, Nora? Oh, package survival meals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, would have been nice if only one person was grabbing them all because they would have stacked them up instead of having all three walk out there. Maybe I should only have one person in a high priority hall. Actually, that's not the dumbest thing ever. I could turn off high priority hall for Nora and Roman. Just have Hannah take care of that. Does shooting specialist turn off doctoring? No, okay. Good. So Hannah can be a shooting specialist slash doctor. Or Nora. No, Hannah. Oh my god, I need to get the. You know what? I should rename these people. I just nicknamed them based on their actual name. Should I just call her Doc? It's my standard. There you go. Doc. Perfect. And then maybe we can leave Nora be Nora. Although we could also rename her like... She's Builder Grower. I don't know. We'll leave her as Nora, but then we'll have Doc. I like that. All right, we got our first Mad Rat. So we get that first. Be nice if the cats help fight the rats. Oh, we are so bad at shooting. We're not bad at meleeing, though. Is Rat going for Roman? Anyway, Roman, just head and sort inside. There you go. Alright, you can be be recruited. Oh! No one lost their eyeballs to a crazed rat. Thank goodness. So then we'll get the naked raid soon. I guess it's time for us to put a cut in here. So let me go ahead and do that now. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy this new series. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, of course, please do that so you don't miss an episode. Uh, and of course, you know, drop the like and comment and all that. It does make a huge difference to those YouTube uh, algorithms. And I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye bye.